Yo, what's up? What's up? It's me again, L Teddy27, Angry Teach Chronicles, all that good stuff. Appreciate y'all for coming to watch and all of that good stuff. And this is our review, Queen Sugar, season four, episode four. Shots out to my line brother, my number four. Anyway, um, um, all right, so let's get started. We got Micah, who's at Nova's house, and they're going through rules and all of this stuff. Micah is supposed to be uh, house-sitting for Nova um, while she's going. So, they're talking this, that, and the third. Um, they talk about how, um, well, you see Nova get really, really, really emotional. And I mentioned this a couple um, reviews ago, how Nova, Nova doesn't show these emotions, these raw emotions in front of the family. However, she chooses to do that with Micah here. And... Uh, and Michael then goes and he talks about how, you know, nobody's coming to the book signing, this, that, and the third. And you can see, I just love Rotina Wesley's acting through all of this. As much as we loathe her character, Nova, the, actu the actual actress, um, Rotina Wesley, is doing a phenomenal acting job with Nova. So we see her display this emotion in front of Micah. And this whole Nova Michael relationship is is needed um for the both of them. Um Micah at this point is Nova's only outlet in terms of only well not outlet but her only connection to her family still. So, um, and he needs her because she's a way for him to vent sometimes. She's a way for him to feel um, safe and protected. And he does trust her. And he knows that she has his best interest at hand. So that, um, you kind of, they needed that. She needed at this point, after the whole situation with um, Vi at the end of last episode, um, where, you know, she was basically eviscerated by on Vi. She needed someone, some connection to the family where she still felt loved. Hmm. Anyway, um, then we see Aunt Vi at home. She's sulking. She's sitting there. She's in her mind. She's thinking about, you know, everything that just went down. The fact that, you know, she thought life was about to be great. You have this great, um, the opening of her diner, the um, getting married, Hollywood, to Hollywood and everything. All of this good fortune. And then all of that is taken away from her because now she has to um, deal with the aftermath of Jimmy Dale. And all of the emotions that come rushing back in with that. And I think everybody has, you know, if, if, if you are, well, not everybody, but if you're at a... Uh, at a decent enough age, you all have that, everybody has that one person that you keep kind of like at a distance because you know all of the feelings and emotions that they invoke. And when you see them or you're in the same space with them again, or you're put in a place where you have to interact with them again, and all of those feelings and emotions come rushing back in and you're like, what the you know, and it just, and you got to take a moment and sit down and just go, oh God. Because you, you really had, you know, locked it away in the innermost repositories of your, your heart or your brain or whatever. And now that Pandora's box has been opened and it just all comes rushing back in. So I kind of understood her. Hollywood says that they need to talk. And she's like, mm-mm, mm-mm. And we're going to talk about why she doesn't want to talk about it later. Um, but I really love, I always love how Hollywood interacts with Vi. 
He's not, he doesn't push. He doesn't prod. He doesn't, you know, he gives her her space when she needs it. He's there when she needs, um, when she, she needs him. He, he does all of the right things, all of the right things. Now, I, I want to see what happens when he doesn't do the right thing and how that interaction is going to go. Because you know, good story writing and good storytelling said everything's not going to be perfect. No one character is always going to be perfect. So, yeah. Then we got, um, she tries to tell him, no, I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about, you know, I, I forgot what she said she was thinking about, but you know she's lying. She's been thinking about Jimmy Dale the whole time. So then we got um, Raul pa Pablo Consuelo Enrique Jorge. He's over at the makeshift clinic that they opened in the barracks that used to be where Charlie um, stayed when she first opened the mill. And um, that has turned into this makeshift um, clinic uh, because Pablo Jorge Consuelo Enrique uh, <laughs> Raul is a physician's assistant. And so he's been helping out the people. Now, uh, Micah comes. Micah comes. Micah has this beautiful moment with Charlie where Charlie tells him, listen, the police found the man. You know, it's okay. They know who he is. He's not connected to any nefarious um, organizations. He's a um, lone, you know, soldier. And, you know, everybody couldn't handle this, but I could, you know, just to reassure him, hey, 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 don't fucking forget that I'm handling this. I got you. I got this. And, and they embrace it. They have this beautiful moment. I liked that moment. And I like that, um, you know, through it all, Charlie and Micah's relationship can remain good and intact. Um, then we're at the diner. Vi is unraveling at this point. She's going off on everybody. She's um, ornery. She's just, you know, she's just not fun to be around. So um, she's making these pies for um, this event that Ralph Angel is having. And then Nova comes or tries to come. And they tell the little worker, I can't remember the worker chick's name. The, the chick who works at the diner, I can't remember her name. They tell her, listen, go tell her no. So you get there when Nova, she gets to the door when Nova tries to come in. She holds the door like, no, bitch, you, you ain't coming in here. Hey, you, you tried to come here the last couple of days. They told you no then. They're telling you no now. Stop trying to come here because I, even if I mention your name, that's going to cause me grief. And hey, you can't stop me from getting my coin. I need my coins. I need my job. And I ain't going to lose my job because if you're at your level, we're in the fuckery. Don't come over here no more. I'm not here for it. So we see that Nova has been trying, but they won't let her in. Um, we're at Rod's house next, we're at the farm. And you see Rod is starting this, um, I guess you would say a program where he is helping out ex-cons um, and those who have been released from jail get a job. And, you know, try to, you know, pick up the pieces of their life and earn an honest living. And so he's explaining to them, listen, it's hard work, da 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 but I'm here and my job is to try and keep you from going back in the system in the next six months. One of the guys was like, well, I heard it's not stable work. He was like, listen, it's work. Now, I ain't no office job, but it's work. Okay? And who finna give you one of those good jobs now that you just got out of jail? Anyway, so I really love that. And I really love how Ra um, started that program. Then we have Charlie, who's at the office with the private investigator chick, the white chick. I don't know if she's a private uh, eye private or whatever. But the chick who gets all the information from her. Chick tells her that the Landrys have um, found out that the government is trying to build a highway, um, a federal highway through um, St. Joseph um through St. Joseph. And it's going the highway is gonna go right between. Most of it is gonna take out um uh, the black farms and the um and the border loans land. And um she was like, oh okay. Come to find out 
that um, they're going to try to get Jacob to run for city council. So Jacob can be, you know, the inside connect so that it can be voted. Um, they can get the votes that they need. So um, you, you can see Charlie's wheels turning and you see, okay, yeah. I, I, this is another situation that, that I got to handle. And you kind of knew from um, the first episode <clears throat> that there was going to be some fuck shit and fuckery with, um, with the um, Landry's. And so now all of that is starting to unravel. And you know Charlie. Charlie's a smart cookie, honey. She's going to have a plan. So then we're at Nova's house. She tries to contact Ralph Angel. He ain't giving her the time of day. She then gets um, a call from, I guess, one of the publishing um, publishers or maybe her publicist or one of her people, or whatever, telling her, listen, the New York Times um, book um, review uh, was met so favorably that now you're going to go on a six week um, book signing tour, a book tour for six weeks. And she's six weeks and she starts to name all of these big cities, Houston and San Francisco and all of these big cities that she's going to go to. Um, and she is, you can see the joy in her face. She's taking so much joy in that. And, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the first time I literally see where it looks like she's really, truly happy. The other times she seems like it was, um, smoke and mirrors as if it was, yeah, I'm happy, but that happiness has some some hurt or some pain behind it. This didn't look like that. This did look like joy and elation when she, um, when you know the um, when she was getting that news. So then we're at Unvise um, Diner. She's still having these memories and these flashbacks, and she's hearing the voice of Jimmy Dale, and it's crippling her. I mean, it's to the point where it's causing her not just emotional distress but physical distress. And I can relate to that a lot. And you, pro and you probably watching this might be able to as well. If I am in love with someone, especially, I'm not talking about the familial love, but we're talking about erogenous love. Me and you are an item and I love you. You know, those people have the ability to hurt you in ways like no other. Because when they affect me, when I get affected by that person negatively, it physically makes me ill. I mean, I will literally get to the point where I have to take a seat down because I am so physically and literally ill from the emotional distress that I am getting. Like that literally happens to me. So I could relate to Aunt Vi where this person is affecting your whole, like it, it's consuming you. And she has to, you know, um, allow the wall to kind of brace her from falling almost. Um, so I understood that. Then you see Charlie's at the diner. She's talking to this, the black city council um, woman who lets her know, listen, I'm not running for re-election. And so Charlie puts the pieces together. Oh, so the Landry's got to you. So they're forcing you out. And so Charlie's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. So, so that's their uh, ploy to get Jacob in that seat. And you know, and y'all know, and if you've seen the previews for the um, um, seceding episodes or whatever, um, you can see Charlie's going, not going to let this just happen. She's going to run against Jacob for that um, council seat. So, um, Charlie then goes to see Francis and she gets a text from Davis. Davis texts her, texts her and says, listen, I have a surprise for Micah. Can I come by and, you know, get a surprise to Micah? She says, fine, no problem. She then goes to talk to uh, Francis Boudreaux, who's back in town. And this whore... Mm, She's a whole ass disrespectful because Charlie comes down to let her know, hey, whore, I know about y'all playing with this little highway shit. Y'all over there in cahoots with the feds and so forth and so on, trying to take land away from me and all the black farmers. And she's like, no, we getting some of our land taken too. And she was like, mm -mm, cut the bull. Baby, Miss Frances Boudreaux told her, hey, hey, honey, hey, whore. 
See how you just strolled your ass on over here so happily and easily? 40 years ago, you wouldn't, you might not have even been good enough to clean my bathrooms. And I look like, girl, because it was a whole disrespectful moment. So blatantly, like, she's a white chick is pulling a race car like, hey, know your place, know your role, and be glad that I'm even entertaining this conversation because you're beneath me. I was like, wow. So then she alludes to, don't try to act like you so much better than me because I read your sister's book. And you, you could see like Charlie was like, oh, this bitch again. Now this whore and her book done got it in my shit again. Now I got to deal with this fuck shit again. And I was like, ooh, ooh. And so Charlie does what Charlie does. See, Charlie is always poised and well put together. Listen, Charlie says, listen, I know y'all trying to put Jacob on the city council too. So y'all can get that um, um, vote. Don't worry. You think I ain't? You think I don't know what I'm doing? She said you couldn't even handle Hollywood. You couldn't even handle basketball, and I handled it well. You read the book, so if I can handle that, oh, I can handle Jacob and a little city council seat. I like that, Charlie. Y'all know Charlie. I love. I haven't always liked Charlie in previous season, but I like Charlie this season. Next, we have Dollar. Dollars with the boo. Only thing I took away from this is, and I wrote this down, and we're going to see this later. It's so interesting that I write stuff down, and then when I write down, I see it later in the episode. I wrote down that he's definitely not Ralph Angel. He's doing all of this talking and everything, and he hugs her, and you can see he was into it, and she was kind of like, mm, okay, he ain't no Ralph Angel. In the looks department, <laughs> and in terms of how he makes her feel. Next, we have um, we're at the farm. Ralph Angel and Benny talk, um, and um, Benny tells Ralph Angel, "Listen, there's some rumors out there, and I just want to ask you: Is it true? Is rumors circulating around the city about Blue not being your boy?" And you know, he's he said, "Listen, I I respect that. That's such a good thing that you would take care of him, like he's your own, and he's really not yours." And so you could tell Ralph Angel is like, this is the bullshit that I knew was going to happen. Woo, child. And, I mean, the scenes go so fast. So I be trying to keep up sometimes, y'all. I really be trying to keep up. Charlie's at the house then. Um, she's over there doing something on the wall or something. Micah, um, she yells, Micah, your dad's here. Now, I think I was writing something down at the time because I didn't, I wasn't paying attention to when Micah came out to the door. Because if she yells, Micah, your dad's here, y'all let me know in the comments, did he have the earphones on and not hear her? Because if he couldn't hear her yelling, how could he hear the door? I was trying to put that together. Because when they started having a conversation, Micah says, oh, mom, I didn't know you were here. And I'm like, wait a minute. How the hell you didn't know your mom was here? She just yelled, Micah, your dad's here. And if you couldn't hear her because of the earphones, how would you be able to hear the door? I'm just saying. Anyway, Davis brings over his daughter, the 13-year-old daughter. Um, and then Micah and the daughter, Tia, goes into the kitchen to eat. Baby, baby, baby shark. Do, 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 do. Charlie goes in. Liz, she, that ain't my daughter. She's welcome here whenever she wants. But I'm not your, her stepmother. And I will not be trying to help you raise that child because that ain't my daughter. Period. Point blank dot org. Anyway, so I love, but I love that whole back and forth dialogue where she lets Davis know, small penis Davis, if y'all know what I'm talking about, y'all saw his pictures that came out a couple years ago. Anyway, she lets his ass have it. Next, we have um, Nova at the book signing. Nova talks about this new 
added section to the book. And it's all about how this um, story about she goes, uh, her dad takes her fishing. She goes, um, her dad goes in to go buy some bait. He comes out. His, his, I think his lip was a little bloody or whatever. You could tell he had been in a, um, a tussle or something like that. Some white guys came out. We're talking about Nova and making cat calls at Nova, alluding to, hey, we're going to get your daughter and we're going to do some things to her. Next thing you know, she talks about she used to like going to the sugar cane, through the sugar cane. She used to go through there at night when her dad was asleep. She, one day she goes there, finds her dad burying what appears to be bodies. She never asked anymore, never went back in the sugar cane. Um, and so revealing that her dad murdered people. Just more bad decisions, Nova. So anyway, the Chantal chick who she used to talk to, I think it was in season one or two. I don't know, one or two seasons. Remember, she used to talk to the chick and the chick had different hair then. And they kind of broke up because the chick saw through Nova and her bullshit. And so... The chick that moved on, so the chick um, uh, went to go get her book signed, and she said, I noticed your family wasn't here, you know, you ever want to talk or whatever, hey, I'm here, you know, I don't, you know, I don't grew up, you know, I don't, I'm doing better for myself, kisses Nova on the lips, and gave her one more sickening kiss, I was like, all right now, we'll see where that goes in a little bit, Donna then, we see Donna buys the book. And she starts reading the table of contents and each table, each um, chapter is about a different um, person. So she sees the chapter on her and it's all about how Darla was getting, um, turning tricks and, you know, Blue was there and all of the seedy, salacious, just awful things in Darla's past. Darla then goes to Nova's house, baby. And goes in like everybody else. Nova tries to feed the same bullshit. Oh, this is going to help some people. You should stand in your strength. You are powerful. Dot, 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 dot. Dollar is not here for the bullshit. Dollar's like, no, boo. No, boo. You called me a thief. You said that I stole things. No, what you did was you stole our stories to uh, make a coin and to make money in cellular book. No, you are the thief. And then she says, you are lower than I ever was. And she's like, powerful statements, great writing with the whole thief comments. Great writing there. Phenomenal writing there. So, next we're at um, Charlie's house. Micah comes home from the book signing, tells his mom about this new section of the book, okay? No, um, and then we see Nova, she's at home alone drinking. Nova tries to call the Chantel chick. Chantel is at home. It's late at night, apparently. So Nova um is kind of feeling hot in the ass and wants to get her something. She's home alone. She's trying to get her a little, you know, something to make her feel good real fast. Baby, she calls Chantel and Chantel's like, listen, honey, listen. I ain't one of these little tricks, okay? I'm not coming at your beck and call. I'm not your wing booze like that. If you want to uh, meet with me, you know where I live. You could have came to me. But you want me to just, you know, it's whatever, old dog 30 in the morning. And you want me to just pick up and come where you at to appease you and to do for you because it's all about you. We ain't playing them games. Try again. And so nobody's like, well, okay, I guess I won't. Mm -hmm, you sure won't. Bye. Thank you, doll. Thank you, boo. Thank you, doll, baby. Then we have Charlie, Rod, and Aunt Vi. They meet at the diner to discuss this new section in the book about Ernest. And what I took from that is such a powerful statement that Aunt Vi said. And to me, this was what the, um, I thought this phrase should have been the title for this episode when she said not all dark corners need light and i sat there and i thought about that thing i said you know what that's right she said it's some things that everybody deserves to go to the grave and only them and god know about she and you know it was great right they said give you something to talk about on judgment day 
And I was like, there was such creative writing there. But I believe that you're, that is wholeheartedly right. Not all dark corners need light. There are some things that you as an individual keep and go to the grave with. Only I need to know that. Because um, they were talking about, they asked Aunt Vi what happened. And Aunt Vi said, you know, I suspected what happened. But I ain't going to ask Ernest that. And I wasn't going to ask him about that. Because that wasn't my business. He did that. And you know what? I let him have that. If he wanted to tell me, he was going to tell me. But if he didn't want to tell me, that wasn't my business. I keep, I keep it moving. And I, but I love, I'm going to have to steal that and integrate that into the repertoire, into the vernacular. Not all dark corners need light. Love that quote. Darla then comes over to see Rod and she is, you know, besides herself. She is boohoo crying, snot bubbles and all. And when she's feeling some kind of way, she goes to see Rod. That's why I told y'all um, earlier, the new boo. He ain't no Ralph Angel. Ralph Angel, baby, she wrapped herself and got enveloped in all of the that dark chocolate and the muscles and oh Lord, do Jesus and do him well. Jesus. Dollar by took me out. She almost took me out at this part of the episode. I almost, you almost got me there, Dolly. You almost got me. She almost took me out, honey. Um, and you know, she's Ralph Angel had not read that part of the book and she's telling him she wrote all about me. This is going to ruin my new life that I've created for myself. And if you recall, Nova tried to tell her when Dollar went to go for her, oh, I made it a point to not to mention your name and to keep, you know, and change names to, you know, protect you. And she was like, Cut the bull, honey. Everybody's going to know you're talking about me. And so she had this moment where she really just let loose and let it all out with Ralph Angel. I'm going to let you keep, you know, being all up on the bay. Dollar. I hate to have to claw your eyeballs out like I'm going to have to do with ugly chick, the lawyer chick. Anyway, Aunt Vi, so you have these series of moments. Um... Well, you see all of these people really just, just like, really, they just, they're dealing with their past. You got Darla dealing with her past and having to just come to grips with her past and really just unloading. Then you got Aunt Vi, who is in the bathroom and Hollywood say, you all right in that? She said, yeah, I'm just going to take me a quick bath. She turns on the water and I guess she thought the water, um, the sound from the water was, um, loud enough baby she put that towel on her mouth and started crying wailing you know one of those from the pits of your belly that guttural from the bowels of your you know of your innermost self and it all just came out and i and you see hollywood he almost feels like okay i don't know if i should give her this moment i don't know if i should go in there and be there for her and he just is resigned in, I'm going to let her have that. But you can see it's affecting him now because she is in there just, I mean, just travailing in. I mean, it is really coming out of her. And, you know, we all have things in our past that if we really had to come to grips with it, it causes us to have a moment like that. And if you've never had a moment like that in your life, you wait. You have, you have either not lived long enough yet or it's coming because there's always things in your life or one thing or a couple things that get you to those points where you have to literally, it's just like, you, it all comes, it, it, it's, it's bad. I've been there before. I, so I felt that. You, then, the day you see Micah drops off, um, go, um, Charlie, I'm sorry, drops off Micah to go meet with the dad and the sister um, and his sister. She Like she told her that I ain't going to be involved. I will drop Micah off. She's always welcome here. She does that. She drops him off. And she's like, mm -mm, I ain't going over there. We ain't doing that. I can't even, don't even got that kind of time. And you see her put on her little shades and you can see those wheels turning. You, she's like, mm -hmm, let me go handle some more business. Let me go connect these dots and handle some more business. And then you see um, Nova. Nova's leaving all along. She tries to call her family and let them know. Nobody's answering. 
She leaves and um, is going on this book tour. Just as empty. Just as, you know, I mean, I you kind of sense that she's been gutted out emotionally. And, you know, though her bags are packed, you know, emotionally, you know, she, she's lost everything. So I wouldn't even call it baggage that she has because she's been gutted emotionally. So I would say she has empty bags that she's carrying around. Baggage, metaphorically. And that was this week's episode of Queen Sugar. You can see <coughs> this was an episode where they were really um, connecting some dots, but bracing us and preparing us for things that are to come. Great episode again. Hope y'all liked. I was here for it. Hope y'all were here for it. Hope y'all enjoyed the review. Thank you for um, watching me. I appreciate all the comments. Please leave comments because I love your comments and I want to be able to respond to everybody. So please leave a comment. I thank y'all. That's all I got for y'all. We'll be back here next week again. Same bat time, same bat station. Thank y'all for coming. Y'all drive safely.